We have got a very special media buzz segment for you on this Easter Sunday with Howie Kurtz. President Trump and the Coronavirus Task Force have been holding these briefings nearly every day, seven days a week now for weeks. And while it gives us uh, an inside look at what the federal response to the pandemic is so far, we'll also see the president clashing, sparring constantly with members of the media. Howie Kurtz joins us. He is the star anchor of Media Buzz. Howie, what do you make of this sparring with journalists in this briefing? Helpful or not helpful? Well, Jillian, there's a very deliberate strategy the president is following in these near daily dust ups with reporters, such as when ABC's Jonathan Carl uh, asked about an HHS inspector general survey of problems at hospitals. Take a look. Her name was Christy Grimm. And it wasn't so much her opinion, but they interviewed uh, 323 different hospitals. You're a third your race reporter. And what you just said is a disgrace, okay? You asked me, you said, sir, just got appointed. Take a look at what you said. Thank, Thank you, you very much, John. Sir? Thank you very much. You will never make it. Well, John Call is not a third rate reporter. He was following up uh, some of the question by Fox's Kristen Fisher, whose question was labeled hard by the president, who also went after a question about ventilators from PBS's Yamish Alcindor as threatening. Now, look, I think these are legitimate questions, but even if you don't agree, even if you think these are unfair gotcha questions by reporters who don't like the president, uh, it comes with the Oval Office territory. And finally, I think the president, having toned down his rhetoric against Democrats and governors, is relishing the chance to use some of these reporters as foils. Interesting theory there. Um, doesn't the president kind of have a point, though, Howie, when he complains about the media coverage writ large? I mean, put aside the press conferences and whether you think these questions are fair or not fair. There is a media bent against him. Absolutely. I have never seen this level of mutual disgust. That's the best word for between the two sides. The Boston Globe said Trump has blood on his hands in the coronavirus crisis. Uh, also, Frank Bruni, New York Times columnist, wrote, uh, well, can anybody find Trump's soul? And the Times put a headline on a piece by another liberal columnist, Michelle Goldberg. Jared Kushner will kill us all. It's just a relentlessly negative onslaught. At the same time, Jillian, uh, what's in a different category is this lengthy investigative piece today uh, in the New York Times, which says that the president uh, dismissed many early dire warnings, for example, from his HHS secretary, Alex Azar, uh, a January 29th memo he was told about but didn't act upon uh, by Peter Navarro, his trade advisor, warning that there could be hundreds of millions of Americans, excuse me, uh, yes, it could be hundreds of millions of Americans that could die in a, in a pandemic. And finally, that there was so much internal uh, struggles uh, over the impact on the economy that that also slowed the administration's response, except for the president's uh, early travel restrictions against China, which was a smart move. Now, Howie, as you look at the criticism you're seeing of the briefings themselves, do you see it mainly coming from the left or do you see it coming from the right as well? Do you see who is it? Where is the most of the thunder? Well, not exclusively from the so-called liberal media. For example, the president was really stung by the Wall Street Journal. He called the journal fake news after its conservative editorial page uh, ran a piece saying that uh, he was making the daily White House briefings too much about himself, too much about politics. And then the Times uh, is quoting some Republican advisors and allies uh, to the president, of the president, uh, as saying that uh, the briefings are hurting him politically. For example, Lindsey Graham saying on the record that the Trump uh, uh, is drowning out his own message and maybe should participate in the briefings once a week. Uh, the president, on his behalf, he loves the ratings, which he compares to the Bachelor finale of six million plus, And he relishes the opportunity to speak directly to the public without the filter of a largely negative media. And one last point, Jillian, that is, uh, it is outrageous, in my view, for some of the pundits at CNN and MSNBC to be calling on television to black out live coverage of these briefings, whether you think they're doing him uh, a service or the country a service or not, because they're saying the public is too dumb to make up their own minds about whether or not he's being a straight.